Hello YouTube, in this video we're going to be, going to be showing you the alternatives to repairing a strip spark plug hole. This is very common on the Ford Triton heads, the, the Romeo heads, all there's a bunch of them, the V8 head, the V10 head, all basically the same head and all basically have the same problem. You go in there to do uh, preventive maintenance you think and you want to change spark plugs and the problem with the spark plug hole in this design cylinder head is that it's way up on the top side above the intake manifold. I don't know if you can see that. And it's so far down, you end up getting a lot of condensation, corrosion um, inside the spark plug hole. Also, they try to put the spark plug further down in the cylinder. So the threads are right down in the cylinder and they get really hot. And not everybody uses anti-seize. So when you go to pull the spark plug out to do a simple spark plug change, it pulls the threads out with them. Uh, one of the tips would be, we wanna make sure we blow the spark plug hole out when you pull the wire off. Blow all the crud out of there because a lot of times you get a lot of crud in the spark plug hole, you pull the spark plug out, all that crud goes into your cylinder. So we wanna blow all that out of there. Also, we wanna go ahead and spray some WD-40 or any kind of good lubricant down the spark plug hole to go ahead and tighten first before breaking loose. It doesn't make any sense, you're trying to get it off. Why would you want to tighten it? The threads are stuck to the spark plug and actually tightening them will help break it loose and then when you back off, it releases. Uh, you have um, a lubricant around the outside. If the ceramic does end up breaking because it's not wanting to come out, this would be a perfect time to use resonant frequency to go ahead and shock the spark plug and let the vibrations loosen the crud that has that has stuck it in there. If we've done uh, um, what we've just suggested, you may not have to even look at the rest of the video. But um, let's just say that the mechanics already pulled it off, it's already stripped, he's called you um, uh, to come by the shop, he wants to show you that he needs to remove the cylinder heads because there's no threads in the cylinder head. Well, now, there, I'm gonna show you the options of how can we fix it without pulling the cylinder heads off. If you include the cost of the labor to remove the cylinder head, the gasket set, uh, and the time down, if it can be repaired on the vehicle, that'd be the way to go. So even if you did it at home and you had to buy one of these time cert kits, which are expensive, it's still a lot cheaper than having a technician at a garage pull the cylinder heads off. A lot of them, that's all they're gonna do because they don't know any better. Okay, so the first option, you, you're at home, you're trying to do spark plugs by yourself, day strip, what are you gonna do? The first thing you're gonna do, Here's the option one that I would suggest. It's um, made by help. Uh, you can get it at a car quiz, Napa, you can get it online. Uh, it's a good brand. The help line is sold by many good quality auto parts stores. I'm sure you can find it online. This is a 42025 is the part number. And it is a thread repair kit in a sense. What it is, it's a steel insert that's oversized and it's self tapping. So you just lubricate it, stick this in there, and you're basically gonna, I don't wanna say cr cross thread it, you're gonna make new threads and screw in the steel insert into the head that was stripped, that's not holding the spark plug. Once that steel insert is in there, it's gonna be in there for life now, and there's a special spark plug. It's a little bit longer to get back in into the hole like it should be. It even comes with a boot. It's a repair, but Instead of spending thousands of dollars to pull your heads off, this could get you back up on the road. It's gonna work just as good as going through the trouble of removing the head or doing a time cert. A lot less cheaper, you can do this at home and yourself. All it takes is a, a deep socket and extension and you're basically screwing in a, an insert into the head that's got bigger threads, or that has bigger threads on this side over here. And it's just self-tapping, screws right in, spark plug screws into it, and you're done. So an inexpensive way that you didn't have to pull the cylinder head off and you're back on the road almost within a few hours. So there's one way, that is with the help time uh, spark plug repair kit. Okay, now we're gonna show you uh, another preferred me method, even preferred, be better than this, but this you could do at home yourself. So we're gonna be using this, this time cert insert kit to do it on the vehicle. You won't have to pull the cylinder heads off. You can do this on the vehicle. It will reach down here, get that far. So you might consider that as opposed to taking it to a shop and having them charge you $1,000 to remove the cylinder heads just to repair the threads. 
you could buy this kit, do all the labor, still get you, a, you know, a six pack of beer, some wine, and take your wife out to eat. So, all right, this is what would be in a time cert kit. In the kit comes everything you need. It has a special, a special insert that already has the step built in. This insert has the special step built in for the Ford Triton spark plugs. So there's your insert. This is gonna go inside of the cylinder head to repair the strip threads because someone didn't use any C's. It was corroded. They manhandled it and just ripped the spark plugs out with your threads, um, which could have been prevented. So this is a special insert that will go in there and repair everything without removing the cylinder head. If the cylinder in this particular head, that's been pulled off there was actually nothing wrong with the deck it never overheated it didn't need a valve job it was removed just because of the insert so in this kit is going to be all the tools that are necessary to do it it even has a special extension that will help you it's a well thought of kit everything is included if you notice there's the extension you can see how far deep that goes, you're not gonna be able to get much in there, even a tap to go in there and thread it. Um, what we used to have to do is TIG weld on a tap ourselves and make our own tooling until we got this kit. So this kit is really a preferred way to do it. On the first part, if you notice the front part is a shank that's a centering tool. As it goes in, this is gonna center on the old spark plug hole, so it'll center itself. This up here will center itself on the top part of the hole. So it's centering on the top and the bottom so that you don't have to do much besides just put the tool in. It even has a, a stop built in. So when you get to where you need to go, you don't need to worry about measuring anything. It has a built in stop. It'll do your counter bore. You put this on, have an Allen screw. You'll drive this in through the hole. You can use an air ratchet on it. You can use the tool that comes with it. You can use a ratchet and just go all the way till it stops. You don't have to figure out how deep am I gonna go. It's all built in on the cutter. Really nice tool, very well th thought of. Um, they did all the thinking for you. So you, it even has all the instructions. So All right, step one, we're gonna take the counter bore and we're gonna stick it in to our tool and use the Allen wrench that's provided in the kit. Pretty easy. Step one. There we are, voila. If you were doing this in the truck, what you would do is go ahead and pack the counter bore with some wheel bearing grease that'll hold all the aluminum from going into the cylinder head or going into the cylinder bore. keep all of that from going into your cylinder. So you'd pack that full of wheel bearing grease and that way we have no problemos. So it really is something that, that a DIYer could do at, at home by themselves. Here we have tool number two. It is a multi-step reamer. Now that we got the top counterboard, it's time to start opening up the hole to allow that insert. The, the time insert is a lot thicker because we're doing the thread repair. Well, this has the counter bore already built in and they've already done all the counter bores so that you can stick this on the tool and go back in the hole and it centers up itself and it does all the boring, including the stop. So you go all the way in till you get to the stop. You don't have to figure out how deep am I gonna go. You don't need to worry about any of that. It's all built in. There's a stop right there. There's a set screw. Leave that set screw alone. Don't mess with the set screws. Now we have a reamer. And we're going to go and switch that out. Look at there. And we're going to 
take off. There it is, our counter bore. I'm gonna take the Allen screw, loosen it up, pull it off. And we're gonna go ahead and put in our reamer. Okay, pretty easy. And don't be scared. It looks like a big old hole. It looks like a big old hole, but that's okay. So now it's reamed. You can see how much larger that is. I don't know if you can or not, but trust me, it is. All right, so now we've even enlarged the hole now. We have a counter bore already in. Now we're gonna thread the hole to accept our insert. This tool also, very cool tool. You're gonna set the set screw and you're gonna go in there. It's gonna center itself up. It's gonna have a, um, um, a locator in the front and it's gonna do the threads. You wanna lubricate the threads very well so that you're not galling the aluminum as it's going in. You're gonna go all the way in, all the way out, it's pretty, uh, I don't want to say self-explanatory or easy, um, but it is very self-explanatory and easy. Okay. Step three, we're going to tap the spark plug hole. It has a little shank at the front of it to help align it. Then also, this is the, the alignment tool that's in there. That's why you want to go ahead and put that back on, because that will help it align it. As you can see, the little wear marks from it just, you know, riding on the head. That's helping to get aligned. We're also going to use plenty of lubricant. Cutting all the WD-40. Um, we got to have a lot of lubricant. Okay. You know, all that aluminum that's why you'd want to use some grease to hold all that aluminum on the bit so that it doesn't go into the cylinder all right I'm just using WD-40, you can see how it catches a lot of it. So you can imagine what some wheel bearing grease would hold the majority of that aluminum there. All right. So we've already now uh, um, tapped the hole to the right side and we want to install the insert. There's a nice little installer. If you notice, it has a slot cut in it and an Allen screw that expands it on the top. That just screws in it even comes with, with an Allen screw. It comes with everything you need. All the, the oils that you need has instructions. It even comes with the Loctite. Everything is in the kit. You don't need anything at all. If you wanted to use an air ratchet to make it faster, you could, but it even has a tool that you don't need an air ratchet. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna tighten up the set screw on the back side. That's gonna lock it in place. And once again, has a little o-ring there to help you hold it you're done gonna go back in the hole with some loctite and you're gonna go all the way in until it gets up to the to the stop once it gets to the stop you're gonna pull this out and you're gonna reach in and remove the center piece comes right out okay okay so we have our insert 
installed on our tool. We're going to use some Loctite. I went ahead and cleaned the threads with brake clean. Make sure they're nice and clean and dry. We have a Loctite 266. I'm going to go ahead and put that on the threads. All right. Let's get this dude in there so that we can go home. Mm -hmm. Let's see if maybe we can, if y'all can see this. Alright, we're going to get it in there firmly and seat it in the hole and about 20 pounds of torque, which is right there. I feel that 20 pounds of torque. Mm -hmm. I'm going to reach in there and loosen that little lock tool up. Once we go ahead and loosen the little set screw that it had on top, we can now go back in here and unscrew our tool. There's our tool and there's the set screw I was talking about. Once you install, once you install the insert on here, you expand the center up see the little slot you go ahead and expand it out and it holds the insert then you put it into the install tool put it in screw it all the way in you're going to set it about 20 pounds hand tight don't get too crazy on it and then we're going to pull this off reach in and loosen that set screw that drops back down and that comes right out everything that i have here and everything including the loctite is in the kit now, what do we have so far? We have an insert now installed in place. What's going to keep this from coming out every time that you pull the spark plug out? Then what you're going to do, you have a swedging tool. This swedging tool looks like the tap in a sense. It's not cutting any threads at all. It's not even really sharp. It has a weird indentions looking on it. Really all it does, it's a swedging tool. It expands it. What are we doing by swedging? The inside of the spark plug threads on the inside are actually smaller than the start point on the top. So it gets tight right about there as far as it can go in. Once we start to run the swedging tool through it, it expands the insert all the way out on the walls and locks it in place. So when you pull the spark plug out, this is going to be in there permanently now. Besides having the, the Loctite, really what's doing the work is the expansion of the swedging tool. Once again, it does not go all the way through. Once you make it go all the way through, it expands it, locks it in the head, you pull the tool out, and you're done. It okay. They're calling this an insert. I call it a swedger, driver. This could be the driver driver oil so let's call it a driver so you want to go ahead and lubricate your driver keep your driver well, i don't want to go there you want to keep your driver lubricated but uh, i guess i did go there y'all bear with me all right loctite that i installed and look at that insert it's nice and flush looks really cool a lot easier than having to go in there and TIG weld the hole, drill it. Everything's already all done. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use the expander. Also this like a swedging tool. And that swedging tool is going to come in from the spark plug hole side. And when it goes in there, it swedges that insert in as it goes in. It's not really cutting threads. It's just expanding it. And it's going to expand it so that it doesn't come back out. Plus it has Loctite. All right, let me go ahead and swedge it. Swedge it. There. So once again, then you're done. It has the, the counter bore there. It has the top spot where the, where, the, where the washer would sit from the gasket. In the head. 
it actually comes out flush on this side here. It's aluminum. Uh, they also make this insert in steel. I like the aluminum insert. It's really a nice insert. And there you go. We saved the head without having to pull the head off the vehicle. All that labor, you could theoretically buy this kit. This is a $500 kit. You think a $500 kit to use one time? Well, guess what? Either pay a, a mechanic more than that to pull your cylinder heads off, or on a Saturday or Sunday at home after work, buy the kit, do your own install. When you're done, put the kit back on eBay, re resell the kit. You're probably gonna make money on it. Um, you could actually start doing some uh, some inserts for other people this is a common problem so you won't get stuck with the kit um i think it's still cost effective to purchase a kit do the spark plugs box it back up again put, put it back online you'll save money you'll do it yourself um if you buy the kit and you take it to a technician and says what do you charge me to install the, the the insert i have the kit you'll probably find that the technician will probably want to buy the kit from you Okay, I hope this helped you in understanding how to repair the cylinder head and possibly not even pulling it off of the vehicle. Um, remember, time is money and don't despair. We can always repair. So we can use a time cert. We can use the help product. We can heliarc weld it if we needed to. But hopefully, um, if you go with the resident frequency, hopefully you don't even have to get that far. Um, there's many ways to repair stuff i'm just trying to show you the different options i hope you've enjoyed this i hope you like this i hope this meant something to you if it did hit the like and share button hit the share and the like button tell all your buds tell all your friends find your technician grab him by the neck and tell him look there's other ways to fix this cylinder head anyway as for me i'm getting back to work And then we're going to counter bore. We're also going to make sure that we're doing the correct hole. You also heard that here first. All right. Tip of the day, keep your tools clean. All right, that's a freebie. All right, see if y'all can see the nice threads. Those some nice threads right there. All right. Okay, what I want to do at this point is I want to go ahead and clean these threads with some brake clean and air because we're going to be using Loctite. Time for me to go get some brake clean. Time for me to go get some brake clean. No, yes, is it? it is. <laughs>